to Wednesdays with Finn. Shout out to my friend Katie this week. I'm currently house sitting for her if you're wondering about the change of venue. I'm sorry that I've been absent my friends but mother has been running all over Kingdom Come. Today we're gonna talk about some of the Kings of Judah because there's no way I'm fitting them all into one video. For review purposes, please remember the last king that was semi-decent over the United Kingdom was Solomon and he was succeeded by his son Rehoboam. Now Rehoboam was a bit of a spoiled little chicken nugget. Everyone say hi to Ryder. This is the creature that I'm keeping alive while Katie's out of town. So Rehoboam was the son of Solomon, and you might remember him as the guy that I had cited as a case study and why you really should have better friends. Do you remember how I talked about how like Jeroboam and the people were coming up to Rehoboam when he was crowned king and were like, hey, yo, so um, can you not treat us like trash? And he went, no, I'm going to treat you like more trash at the behest of his friends. Yeah, that, that was Rehoboam. That was that guy. Israel rebelled. They crowned Jeroboam as king, except for Judah and Benjamin, who stayed loyal to Rehoboam. All right, so now we have the divided kingdom. You have Israel in the north and you have Judah in the south. This is gonna shock you, but Rehoboam did not improve as a person after this entire rebellion thing. This man, say it with me now, did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, four of you, when I say that this man did evil in the sight of the Lord, what I mean is he did not respect the Levites as a priestly class. He put anybody who wanted to as a priest. He set up foreign gods. He, he set up uh, ash, the Asherah poles for the people to worship at. He set up uh, altars that were not the altars of God to worship at, and he just generally was a but face. Oh yeah, and he also instituted male prostitution at the shrines, so there's that. Prepare yourselves for yet another huge surprise, my friends, but God wasn't exactly happy about this, to the point to where he allowed Shishak, king of Egypt, to come in and just loot the temple in Jerusalem. So yeah, I think it's kind of safe to say that Rehoboam's reign was not exactly as successful as it could have been. Rehoboam was then succeeded by his son, Abijah. Now, do you remember Israel's grand tradition of if you suck as a leader, your successor is not going to last very long? Heh. <laughs> Abijah. Homeboy reigned for three years and, quote, committed all the sins of Rehoboam, so you can imagine what that means. I will say this for Abijah, though. He has this one scene in Second Chronicles that makes him sound like a Jewish William Wallace. Essentially, Abijah just screams at the entire army of Jeroboam, saying like, hey, yo, you're not following the law of God, okay? So you're gonna lose. You're about to get wrecked, son. You know, we're, we're following the law of God. We're respecting the Levites. Now, was he? No, but it sounded good on paper. Abijah then won the battle and completely wrecked Jeroboam's shop, so you know he did something right in his entire kingship. Yay! Next up is Abijah's son, Asa. The thing that amuses me most about Asa's reign is how many kings Israel went through while he was king. Asa reigned for 41 years, and while he was king, Israel went through Nadab, Basha, Elah, Zimri, and Omri. That's five kings to Asa's one. Like, <laughs> Israel, are you okay? The answer to that question, by the way, is no, Israel is not okay, but we've already been over that, so we're just gonna gloss right over. Asa was known for his reforms. Asa was all like, hey, you know what we're not feeling? Religious prostitution. Let's maybe get rid of that. Homeboy was so serious about religious reform that he even deposed his grandmother, Maka, as the queen mother for putting up a natural pole and worshiping it. He was doing really great until his war with Basha. Basha was all like, hey, yo, so I'm gonna like take over your kingdom now. And Asa's like, you know, how about you don't? Asa goes to the king of Aram and is like, hey, yo, us, can you like go make war with Basha so that I can keep my kingdom? And Aram's like, I got you, fam. In doing so, Asa then doomed Judah to constant war with Aram. Fun fact, when a prophet came to Asa and said, hey, yo, so you just doomed your kingdom? He imprisoned the prophet. So, you know, it's, it's good to know he's learning all the right lessons from Israel. So good job, Asa. I'm gonna give him a solid B. Like a, like a good B minus. He started out well, but then he was all like, hey, what if I just do my kingdom to war? He also didn't tear down the high places where the people went to worship foreign gods. So that was a bit of an oversight on his part that will come back to bite us. Next up is Asa's son, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat reigned for 25 years. He is generally at peace. You know, he walked in the ways of his father, Asa. He did like a lot of religious reforms. And like Asa, he also did not tear down the high places. He did, however, send out teachers to teach the law to the people so that they could like, you know, know what God wants from them. Amazing, a king who understands his responsibilities, a spiritual leader, who'd have thunk. I'm gonna give him a solid B plus. After Jehoshaphat comes Jehoram. Jehoram was the firstborn of Jehoshaphat and began his reign by killing all of his brothers along with every other prince of Judah. He was known for walking in the ways of the house of Ahab, including marrying into it. So that's great. Highlights of Jehoram's reign include rebuilding the high places, rebuilding the Asherah poles, rebuilding altars to foreign gods, and reinstituting religious prostitution. The only thing that saved him and his line was God's covenant with David. Don't think there wasn't punishment though, my friends. Because of Jehoram's actions, the Lord aroused the anger of the Philistines against his family, who then came in and just wrecked shop and killed off all of his sons except his youngest, Ahaziah. Jehoram's final punishment went thusly. After all this, the Lord afflicted Jehoram with an incurable disease of the bowels. In the course of time, at the end of the second year, his bowels came out because of the disease, and he died in great pain. His people made no fire in his honor as they had for his fathers. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. 
He passed away to no one's regret and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. I'll say this for God, that's a pretty creative death. I'd say like a really good thing to take away from Jehoram's reign is maybe don't turn the house of God into a prostitution ring. Just gonna throw that out there. I'm also just gonna like throw it out there that murder might not be the best idea either. Our last king for the day is Ahaziah. This is a different Ahaziah, not the king of Israel. Completely different, no relation. They're just both named Ahaziah. This Ahaziah only reigned for one year. Now Ahaziah, like his father before him, walked in the ways of the house of Ahab at the behest of his mother, Athaliah. Remember the name Athaliah because she will be back to ruin everyone's day. Anyway, so Ahaziah's advisors were all from the house of Ahab and this turned out to be his doom. This man did not have the sense the good Lord gave a bag of hammers. Y'all remember me talking about Jehu's rebellion? Well, Ahaziah was good friends with King Joram of Israel. So Ahaziah had gone down to see Joram, right? And so Jehu's in the middle of his rebellion. He's like, oh, hey, another godless king. Let me just take care of that. And so while he's killing off like all the godless princes of Israel, he goes ahead and like takes care of Judah as well and uh, has has Ahaziah brought before him and killed too. Ahaziah's mother, Athaliah, did not take this well. Queen Mother Athaliah, upon hearing about the death of her son, uh, kind of went a little crazy and she killed off the rest of the royal family of Judah and took on a bloody interregnum reign for six years. Only one son survived, smuggled away in the night by his aunt. Stay tuned next week to find out who it is. So what can we learn from this particular cycle of buffoonery? I done said it before y'all, please guard your legacy, please for me. You can do all the good things in the world and worship God as much as you want, but if you don't train your children to do it, you might as well burn down everything you've built yourself because they're going to do it for you if you don't. Also, murder is bad, kids. Additionally, I would caution you against following the ways of the house of Ahab because you might die in the toilet. Stay tuned next week for more of the marvelous misadventures of the kings of Judah, but for now, stay safe, make wise choices, and happy Wednesday.